another day, another recap. Today we'll be diving into an action crime movie titled Tower Heist, there will be some spoilers ahead and without further ado, sit back, relax and enjoy the recap. Early one morning Josh Kovacs prepares to get to work at the Tower, a prestigious apartment complex where he is the building manager. The penthouse resident of the Tower is a Wall Street billionaire named Arthur Shaw who is currently playing a game of online chess with Josh. After making his move, Josh leaves his house and greets his friend Slide, who is a petty crook around the neighborhood. At the tower, the doorman Lester greets Arthur on his way to work. Josh meets him outside and informs him about the preparations for an upcoming party, and Arthur is reminded just how valuable he is. Once Arthur leaves, Josh proceeds inside and greets Manuel, the head of security. Thankful about no major issues, he then meets Rose, the personal assistant he shares with Simon, the general manager of the tower. Their conversation is interrupted by a housekeeping staff, Odessa, who reminds Josh about her soon-to-expire work visa. Josh then suddenly hears a buzzing sound and attempts to figure out whose phone is ringing, only to find that it is their potential new elevator operator, Enrique. Informing him about the tower's prestige, Josh lets him know that the staff is not allowed to have their phones on. Moving on to the lobby, it is then proved exactly how much the residents depend on the staff when one of them asks for Charlie, and Lester entertains the kids on their way to school. Informing Enrique about not accepting tips at the tower, Josh then spots Charlie and reprimands him for his tardiness, while warning him that Simon could soon fire him if he kept being late. A while later, Josh is back with Simon when he learns that one of their residents, Mr. Fitzhugh, a former Wall Street investor, is facing a forceful eviction by the bank the next day. To avoid this disaster and its troubles, Josh goes over with the intention of asking them to leave peacefully. Instead, when he realizes that the family has nowhere to go, he suggestively informs Mr. Fitzhugh of a scheduled elevator maintenance the next morning, implying that they could stay another day. Back in the lobby, he sees Arthur with Enrique and eventually agrees to hire him. Leaving work later that evening, Lester excitedly informs Josh about his plan to retire in a year. The next morning, it is routine as usual for Josh as he leaves for the tower. Once there, he wonders why Arthur hasn't left for work yet, and notices four guys approaching the building from across the street. Anticipating a robbery, he asks Lester to lock the door and calls for all other exits and elevators to be locked as well. Pulling up images of the garage, he sees Arthur getting into a van and assumes a kidnapping. He rushes to the garage and chases the van for quite a while until he is clotheslined by a woman just as the van topples over. FBI agents immediately surround the van and begin to arrest Arthur. Agent Claire Denham then clarifies that Arthur wasn't being kidnapped but rather was attempting to flee and arrests him for securities fraud followed by an immediate asset freeze. That evening, Josh gathers the staff to inform them that Arthur has been managing their pension accounts for a few years, which could mean that they have lost it by now. As expected, the news is not received well. Out on a conditional $10 million bail, Arthur is escorted back to his penthouse the next morning and is placed on strict house arrest. Spotting a parked Ferrari in the living room, Claire is told that it originally belonged to Steve McQueen, and also that it had been taken apart and reassembled there. Clearly warning Arthur to stay indoors or face forfeiting his bail, Claire then asks to speak with Josh. Arthur hurriedly offers Josh some money to get him to handle his food deliveries only for his tip to be turned down. While the FBI goes through the tower's garbage later, Claire refuses to say much about the case but simply confirms that Arthur is guilty. Returning home that evening, Josh sees Slide being arrested. Elsewhere at a subway station, disappointment over losing all his money, Lester walks towards the tracks. Soon after, Josh heads over to the hospital where Charlie informs him that Lester was pulled back just in time. Meeting Josh, Lester confesses that he had given Arthur all his savings to invest implying that he could not retire anymore like he planned to. An overwhelmed Josh rushes back to the tower intending to speak to Arthur himself. He runs into the now evicted Mr. Fitzhugh in the elevator and learns that Arthur certainly knew his end was near at least a year back. Charlie and Enrique accompany Josh to the penthouse where Arthur tries to convince them that he isn't guilty. Josh finally realizes Arthur's fakeness and takes a golf club to his prize Ferrari. Not even Arthur stopping him multiple times deters him from striking repeatedly, however the extreme vigilante behavior costs the three of them their jobs. Josh meets Claire later that night when she lets slip that they haven't found Arthur's safety net of $20 million, and even goes as far as suggesting storming the castle to find it. Realizing something, Josh requests access to his office at the tower and finds information about a hidden safe that Arthur had installed in the penthouse. Over the next few days Josh recruits Enrique, Mr. Fitzhugh, and Charlie for the daunting task ahead. Through their discussions it is revealed that the biggest difficulty is getting Arthur out of the penthouse and getting themselves in there. However, Josh somehow manages to convince all of them despite each having their own doubts about the group's capabilities. Josh then pays for Slide's bail the next day and asks him to join the group. 
While the amount involved certainly interests Slide, he still decides to test the group. At the mall, he gives everyone 15 minutes to individually steal something worth $50 and demands that they leave their wallets with him. Everyone heads off to different shops and successfully come back with their various shoplifted items. While their actions prove their worth to Slide, they also learn not to trust him with their wallet since he confesses to have stolen their cash. The group meets over the next few days to discuss security details of the tower. Interrupting one such session, Claire informs Josh that the case will soon be dismissed, and that Arthur wanted to press charges against him for destroying his car. Since Arthur mentioned he would drop the case if Josh apologized, Claire accompanies him to the penthouse where he sincerely assures him of paying him back for the damage. Back home, Slide insists that they need someone who has experience breaking into safes which leads to inviting Odessa over the next evening. Having learnt the skills from her locksmith father, she confidently states that she can pick any lock. Scoping out the tower the next day, Josh and Mr. Fitzhugh spot Charlie entering the building. As it turns out, Simon offered Charlie Josh's old job which he gladly accepted. Happy about his employment status, he warns Josh to drop their plan. While Odessa shares her knowledge with Slide, Claire learns that the trial will be held on Thanksgiving Day to avoid the media frenzy. She is also told of Arthur's intention of pressing charges despite the apology. She immediately lets Josh know about the change and he is surprisingly pleased while relaying it to the group. While the city prepares to enjoy the Macy's parade, Josh dispatches Enrique to find his Charlie's wife while she travels and Charlie reports for duty on his first day as the tower's building manager. At the penthouse, Arthur is escorted out for the hearing. After sneakily stealing Charlie's wife's phone, Enrique joins Josh and Mr. Fitzhugh across the tower. Once Arthur leaves with the FBI, Josh spots Slide approaching the tower on his own. While the group realizes the betrayal, Charlie is in the tower's lobby when he receives news of his wife having gone into labor. Asking Rose to cover for him, he hurriedly rushes out just as Josh, Enrique and Mr. Fitzhugh get in through the building's service entrance. While the security is preoccupied, the rest of the staff, headed by Odessa, celebrate a pretend birthday in the lobby. Meanwhile, Slide meets Simon and pretends to be a banker, asking to see the newly demolished Fitzhugh apartment. Unable to take the elevator because of Slide and Simon, Josh and the others are left with no option but to take the stairs. As Simon takes him around the apartment, Slide locks him in one of the closets and makes a run for it. Meanwhile Odessa rams her cleaning cart into the FBI agent guarding the empty penthouse. Josh finally makes it to the elevator machine room and shuts off Slide's elevator who immediately looks for an escape even as the others resume their long climb to the top. While Slide climbs the service ladder, the rest of the group reunites in the penthouse and immediately cover all the cameras before attacking the suspected wall. Slide reaches the penthouse just as the group sees the hidden safe in the wall. Holding them at gunpoint he asks everyone to step away but gives in when Odessa walks in with a gun of her own. Picking up Slide's gun, Mr. Fitzhugh gets him to behave while Odessa gets to work on breaking the safe open. In the lobby, Charlie returns from the hospital after a false message about his wife and realizes Josh's ploy. Quickly pulling up the penthouse, he sees the sleeping agent and is also told that Simon is showing the Fitzhugh apartment to a banker. Meanwhile Arthur arrives at the courthouse with the FBI only to find that it is closed for the holiday, and they head back to the penthouse. Back at the penthouse, Odessa cracks the code and Josh opens the safe only to find it completely empty. Slide's gun is fired by mistake in the ensuing chaos and the Ferrari is hit. Scratching away bits of paint on the car, Josh realizes that Arthur hid his money in plain view since the car is made of solid gold. A quick calculation from Mr. Fitzhugh reveals that it would be valued at around $45 million, but the problem facing them is that neither can they cut into it, nor can they drive it out of the penthouse. However, considering Mr. Fitzhugh's apartment six floors below didn't have doors or windows anymore, Josh thinks to use the building's cleaning platform to lower the car there. Enrique operates the platform from where it rests along the terrace, and Mr. Fitzhugh goes down to his former apartment to wait while Josh and Slide remove the penthouse's window. On their way back from the futile trip to the courthouse, Claire realizes that there must be an ongoing robbery at the tower. With the car secured to the mechanism of the cleaning platform, it is pulled out of the penthouse and carefully lowered down. When it reaches Mr. Fitzhugh though, he is unable to pull it in thinking of what his life has come to, this gets Slide and Josh to lower themselves to the car hanging onto the cleaning platform's wire. Refocusing on the task Mr. Fitzhugh ties one end of a rope to a cement mixer in the apartment and proceeds to reach out to the car with the other end, however he ends up hanging from the front of the car instead. Swaying dangerously 59 floors above the ground, he attempts to reach out to the rope and narrowly misses but is fortunately caught just in time by Charlie. Josh and Slide then make their way into the car as Charlie reluctantly joins the group and prepares to pull the car in. Precisely hooking onto the car's bumper, he gets it in, and learning that it is made of gold, he quickly devises a plan of action. He gets Enrique to stop the elevator a floor below them while they roll it out to the corridor. While looking for the keys, Josh finds a ledger of all the funds Arthur diverted over the years. Forcefully opening the elevator's door, the group then pushes the car into the shaft. Meanwhile, Claire and the FBI finally arrive at the tower with Arthur and call for the elevator. 
With security overriding the stopped elevator, the Ferrari is held steady by everyone as they zoom down to the lobby. They then make the journey all the way to the penthouse, this time with Claire and Arthur below them. Contacting Lester, Josh directs him to Slide's stolen van and gets him to bring it to the garage. Meanwhile, Claire spots the hidden safe inside the penthouse and revokes Arthur's bail. However, he realizes that the car is missing and warns her not to let it leave the building. She orders the building to be locked down and heads over to check the garage. Seeing the van, she rushes outside even as it breaks through the locked shutter. Lester drives maniacally through the parade even as Claire follows close behind, he soon runs into a few cop cars and is forced to stop. However, the van is revealed to be empty. At the tower, the FBI arrests Mr. Fitzhugh, Odessa and Charlie in quick succession. Enrique tries to make a run for it while Claire finds Josh taking a leisurely stroll in the park before arresting him. When the group joins Arthur, he asks about his car. Still not having learned his lesson, he tells them that working-class people like them have no way of escaping the punishment for such a crime, and adds that he will soon be back in his penthouse while they will all be put away for a long time once the car is found. Josh agrees to being imprisoned for a few years but confidently replies that Arthur will be spending the rest of his life there since they found his ledger. Amidst all this, Simon is still stuck in the closet in the demolished apartment. Having passed the bar three days ago, one of the hotel's former workers represents the defendants and asks for them to be released on the basis of the submission of Arthur's ledger only if everyone gets away. Appreciating her negotiating skills, Claire's boss agrees to release everyone except Josh. Facing two years in prison as a first-time offender, Josh agrees for the sake of the others. While Arthur is believed to turn in a guilty plea at his next hearing, the group except Josh joins Slide at the penthouse's swimming pool later that evening where the car is safely hidden. Charlie's wife soon gives birth, and where Arthur faces a hard time in prison, the staff at the tower have a sparkling reason for celebration instead. After all, everyone including Rose, Manuel, Lester and Iovenka receive various solid gold car parts in the mail. On the other hand, Josh begins his two-year sentence knowing what is waiting for him at the other end. Thanks for watching, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.